Okay, um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and uh, very good morning. Right, um, today we will learn about stellar parameters. It's a new chapter, right? So far we have covered um, chapter 1 and chapter 2. The first one is about uh, interactions and the second one is about uh, interaction of light matters. Now we will go deeply, right, uh, about the stellar. But somehow uh, before that we start with uh, Um Kita Al-Fatihah. All right, so um, dear students, okay, so far when we talk about stellar parameters, I'm sure um, we have uh, an idea about that, yeah, um, because we know that um, some of the parameters we have learned, uh, such as the mass, yeah, the temperature, the Kali index, and then um, we will go too deep in this chapter, all right, but so far, let me highlight a few things about um, uh, the things that uh, the keys, yeah, um, which is uh, will be have almost every year, yeah. And this is the things that we need um, to have the awareness <coughs> because um, it will also affect to the earth, yeah. Somehow this is a little bit uh, figures in uh, maybe um, some of the countries that uh, will uh, affect our uh, systems of life, yeah. Okay. So, um, in this topic, um, we need to learn about the mass luminosity, the effective temperature. So, this is um, all. This is a main parameters. Yeah, if we look through um, uh, the from the first topic instead of the distance, okay. And then we want to see the relationship between um, mass and radius, and then uh, the mass and the luminosity relationship. Before we move on to the spectral class. And then we will move to luminosity classes, right? So there's a difference between the spectral class and also the luminosity classes before we move on to the new topics, which is the Hasper Russell diagram. Hasper Russell diagram, or we call it as a Hishar diagram, might be new for you, right? But this is the point of the uh, evolutions of the stellar, okay? All right. Um, I hope that you will see this uh, YouTube, okay? This is about the stellar, right? Because and the first things that we need to understand is uh, we know that the stars have a, a binary or a multiple stars, right? So this is an example of the stars named Albirio, which have two visible distinguished uh, components. So we can see that this star is a binary stars with a different colors, right? One is the red, uh, sorry, the, the looks like a yellow red one, and uh, the second one is look like bluish. So it do have the different age if we look through this, right? Although it's a binary or maybe it's a twin, right? Like uh, um, if uh, of, uh, if human, but somehow the process or evolution is different, right? And this uh, Abirio is actually orbit shadows, okay? Um, and we call it as Abirio stars. It looks like one stars, and uh, there's also um, what we call as a remnant of uh, supernova. This is SN five. 1572 uh, code. So when we look to the catalog, if you start, uh, if you start with the SN, means that it's a supernova type, right? So this is a late type of stars which have an explosion of supernova and uh, will death anytime, right? So, uh, or will die anytime. So we can see that uh, it do have a remnant there, all right? Now, um, as a part of the binary stars, we have learned about the photometry, right? So from the photometry, we can see the light curve because uh, this is very important to us to understand how does the stars orbit each other. So what is the velocity of each star, for instance? And um, what is the distance between both, right? So this is all of this question can be asked from the uh, photometry uh, research. Okay, so we can see somehow um, some of the stars also have the uh, transformation of the mass if it, um, the, the distance is uh, quite near of each other. So um, we can see at the figure 2, right, where uh, the transformation of the transfer of mass can be happen, right? And this um, will give the light curve which is different compared to the first one. And uh, you can see also there is a 
things like um, difference of magnitude, right, at a certain cycle. And it will have the maximum magnitude and it will have also the minimum magnitude to represent, right, how does the uh, orbital of the stars. Okay. So, basically, it might be the same size. Somehow, it might be a different size. Yeah, Mostly, it's different size. And uh, we can see that um, you also do have the different colors in this case. Mostly, also will have different colors. Yeah, because um, um, uh, we can have also not just a binary stars, but somehow more than two stars. We call it as a multiple stars. Okay, so the main part is we want to see how does the stars orbit each other. And from there, we can have either it have the similar orbit or similar mass orbit or not, right? And it also have the common uh, very center yeah, um, in eclipse orbit, for instance. So we want to look from there and then we want to see and understand uh, the behavior of the stars, okay? So that is a part of the example because um, if you look through the stars, mostly it's not um, a single star, but somehow mostly it's either it's binary or is it a multiple stars. All right. So as a part of introduction, the main things that we need to understand is what is a star, right? So you need to understand that it is an intensely hot, very, very hot, a gaseous, spherical body, and it's produced energy by the thermonuclear reactions. So we, we understand that, right? Because the thermal equations happen or occur in the core of the stars. And uh, first element is hydrogen, okay? So when we talk about first element hydrogen, it will converting from the hydrogen to helium. So we can see that um, it will form a series of layers after that, but it will take a million of years, okay? And um, there is an energy transfer. So the mechanism, mechanism of transformation, of course, will be in the radiation process instead of the conduction or instead of the convection, because it's still a light um, elements, yeah, it's still in hydrogen. And um, at the core, um, of, of, we can have the nuclear reactions. So this is important in terms of physics and in terms of chem uh, chemistry, because um, we want to see how big the size contain the um, hydrogen or maybe a helium. Yeah? So it will give the idea either you can produce a massive stars or a low massive stars, right? With, um, from the core, from the core of the stars. Okay. So um, as we know that the energy is transported away uh, by radiation first, before it becomes heavier and heavier, then only it will do the process of convection. Because we need to understand that convection process will happen if only um, there is a liquid which is contain the gas or maybe the liquid. If not, then uh, there will be no convection process. Most of the time is actually in radiation process. Okay. All right. So um, one of the laws that are very important in terms of determining the stellar parameters is what we call as a wind's displacement law or we call it uh, in normally we call it uh, hukum sesaran winds yeah so it's about displacement it's about the distance okay and uh, this law is actually is very good because we can see the relationship between the wavelength right with the temperature so um he state that there is an inverse relationship uh, between the wavelength of the peak emission, right? So uh, back to the first and second chapter, what is the peak emissions? And then these relationships we can have the formula where we call it as a lambda maximum or the wavelength maximum is equivalent to the B, which is a constant and is a represent of a wind displacement law or displacement constant divided by the T. All right, T is actually the temperature in Kelvin unit. All right, because in this case, the wind displacement also in a Kelvin unit. So we can have that the wind constant is about 2.8 times 10 power of negative 3, negative 3 meter Kelvin. So bear in mind, this is actually meter Kelvin, not a millikelvin, right? Because we do have 
the wavelength. Wavelength is in, actually in meter unit. Okay. So, when we talk about um, lambda maximum, okay, lambda maximum. So, this is actually um, represent the peak time. Okay, so we can have the peak in this case. Okay, and um, this is one of the examples of the figure to show the position of the lambda maximum. So, we can see that at the center of each um, red color, uh, yellow color and so on, this is um, shows the temperature and also the wavelength. Okay, so we can see how does it react and it also appropriate with the um, black body radiations. Yeah? It's associated with the black body radiation because we know that the star is the best um, ideal object of the black body radiations because it do have the very, very high temperature compared to the what we have in the Earth. Okay, any object in the Earth, right? So we need to understand this because from this kind of figures, we can see that you do have the wavelength and then at the same time, we do have the um, temperature, right, in Kelvin unit. So this is the behavior, right, the behavior of each um, stars. Maybe we can say that uh, the temperature can represent 300, sorry, 3,500 represent as stars A, while uh, the temperature of uh, 5,500 Kelvin represent as star B. So we can see that it will have a peak like uh, more to left centered once the temperature is high. Yeah. So once the temperature is low, so it will go to the, um, uh, we call it as the uh, long wavelength so we can see that it has the inversely relationship between the um, each other yeah, for this graph okay or from this figure so how we can know that okay so, um, it's still based on the mechanical quantums and it will have the relationship between the Planck's law okay um, if we look to the black body radiation process we know that the brightness or any kind of you um, parameters and have the relationship between the wavelength and also the temperature have the uh, formula which is equivalent to 8 pi H3 over lambda power of 5 divided by 1 over E power of H3 divided by H, uh, lambda Kt minus 1. All right. So this is actually in mechanic quantums. Okay. We know that um, in the Planck's law, we do have this kind of relationship, okay? So this wavelength is a function of maximize of its sort, and then um, we can have the um, dependent of the lambda and also dependent of the temperature for this formula, All right? So it's due respect to the lambda, and it will set to equals to zero, okay? Then, once we do uh, put a derivation process, because since it do depends on the wavelength, all right? So we can have the delta u over delta lambda. So we can put it as a zero, all right, to get the um, equations um, and derivation simple. And from this, we can see then, and we can simplify that uh, the hc over lambda kt uh, times with one over one uh, minus e power of negative hc over lambda kt minus five is equals to zero. So this is a simplification, um, simplified formula from the um, previous one, okay? Since we know um, this have the similarity there, then we can put as if, uh, x equals to hc over lambda kt, okay? And then we can also simplify it as a x for each um, hc over lambda kt. And then we get that x over 1 over um, 1 minus e power of negative x minus 5 is equals to 0. So this is based on the mathematical methods where we call it as a, a numbered uh, product log function, right? This is important because we make the formula become easier and easier when we use the numbered product um, log function. <coughs> okay, so from this, okay, we can put, right, that uh, the x is equals to 4.965, uh, 
Yeah. So it do have the value there. Okay, this from this uh, results. Yeah. So once we put um x over one minus e power of negative x equals to five, then we can have that the x is present as the four point nine uh, six five. Okay. Then only we can put again this value to the first or the second equations before, and it will represent that the lambda maximum equals to k c over x times if one over k t, and this is um represent as a 2.897 times 10 power of 6 nanometer Kelvin divided by T. Right, so um, this is the value of the constant value for the wind law. Okay, so that is the beautiful of the derivation or theoretical of physics because we can get a constant value. We can calculate or prove, right? You can also prove uh, what is the um, speed of flight, for instance. How does the speed of flight equals to 3 times 10 power of 8 meter per second? So this is actually uh, implemented in the modern physics subject, right? So uh, see also with this one, yeah, we can uh, have the constant value for um, the P, which is represent as the wind's law, okay? And uh, hopefully you understand this, okay, um, how to prove and how to apply uh, this formula. Yeah. <laughs> so if you have any question you can ask um, the next lecture inshallah all right okay now we move to another subtopic which is uh, the mass the luminosity the temperature or the effective temperature so far you have learned that um, what is the mass is i'm sure you know the luminosity so please remember um, that uh, the relationship between um, flux and also luminosity so we know that luminosity is equals to 4 pi r squared uh, times um, sigma t power of 4. So it do have the relationship between the area times with the temperature and also the stephen boltzmann uh, constant. And then um, the effective temperature. So it do have relationship between the colors too because we can get the idea of the temperature range based of the colors. Yeah? colors of the stars of colors of the celestial object so um of course the keys of the stars uh, um we know that we are interested to have to know the, the mass to know the luminosity we want to know what is the value of the surface temperature or maybe the inside of the temperature the core temperature all right at the same time and then we want to know um what is the distance away uh, from us, eh? what is the distance of the stars away from us? So these parameters <laughs> is uh, also based on the classifier of the stars. Okay, maybe at the type of the stars, and also we can be catalog in the HR diagram or Hasper Russell diagram. Okay, so um, this is the basic one of the Hasper Russell diagram. Um, bear in mind, it actually do have a um, many portions of the uh, HR, um, HR diagram, right? But this is the best, very basic one because it includes the luminosity versus um, temperature and it do have a different types of uh, stars or evolution of the stars such as the main sequence, okay? The white dwarf, the red giants, and also the super giants. So this is basically the main evolutions, right? And I'm sure that you know start start from the clouds, yeah. And then uh, it will take a long of times to move to the main sequence before it move to the red giants, before it move to the super giants, and then it will be um, decreasing in terms of the size, and we call it as a white dwarf. So basically, the luminosity is about uh, 0 0.01 to uh, 10,000. Um, luminosity compared to the solar or luminosity of the sun, all right? And uh, we do have also the increasing of temperature from 2500 to uh, 50,000 Kelvin. So uh, bear in mind for the case of the temperature, the value for the X plot is actually decreasing, yeah? decreasing. So we can see it's not just start from 2500, but it start with 50,000 Kelvin and decreasing to 
2500 okay all right so is specifically the mean sequence stars is actually uh, defined as a curve trend across the center so we can see it's actually at the center and uh, this is actually uh, in the process of matured uh, stars right a mid medium stars right mid age of the stars and um we can say that the relationship between mass and luminosity uh, it do have a wide range Right, so it can have the high luminosity with the high effective temperature. Why do we giant stars? It's actually the next stage, and of course, since icon is a rich giant, so the color is red mostly. It's a cooler one, right? So you can see that it's actually at the right of the um, graph or the, um, in the x axis. It's cooler but luminous, okay. And uh, we need to understand that this luminous is depends on the size or the area. And um, this thought to be either the dead stars or protostars because it's actually in the range of uh, 2500 Kelvin or uh, to the maybe 4000. So it can be uh, the same um, temperature with the protostars or the same temperature of the dead stars. Now we move on to super giants. When we talk about super, of course, the size must be more, more um, larger compared to the rich giants one, and more luminous. Yeah, so the luminosity will be increasing, and uh, somehow it will be cooler, right? So it will be cooler, and um, so we can see that the relationship it much more depends on the area in terms of the size to make sure that the luminosity increasing. Okay. And then um, this is much cooler, but not all stars can have at this stage yeah, uh, to the supergiant ones. Only the very uh, massive stars can be as the supergiants. And then we will have a uh, move on to the white dwarf. So when we talk about dwarf, it might be, of course, the size will be decreasing. The, small, the size will be getting smaller, all right? But somehow the unique about this dwarf or white dwarf is actually it will be hotter all right so it can be a thousand of um, ten thousand to fifty thousand kelvin okay but less luminous so it means that the size will be decreasing or smaller compared to the supergiant compared to the rich giant ones okay so um this is thought to be a dead stars and uh, the radiating it will radiate away their energy so this is one of the factors why it becomes small yeah? the stars become uh, smaller okay all right so um this is uh, the stage or the evolutions of this um, or we call it as a cycle of the birth life uh, death for the stars yeah so we can see that it start with the clouds first okay before it move to the protostar and then it will give um and to the the to the center point where we call it as a mid sequence okay and it will, it will take a lot of time a lot of time years before it moves to the rich giants okay some of the star will go, uh, go to the super giants some is not but some will go to the uh, most of it it will go to the white dwarf right so uh, majority will go to white dwarfs before uh, we can have a uh, uh, supernova explosion death yeah uh, which is means that the star is death okay so um this is um, the cycle shows the very clear about the process okay and um, most of the stars of course um will evolve um to the main trend right and uh dwarf stage and we can see the development of the large clouds, right, uh, of increasingly dense hydrogens, um, which should convert to the heliums, right, and uh, still have a gas, still have a dust. Um, we start with the few hundreds from uh, for the uh, hydrogens to process, but it will increasing to the thousands values. And uh, once um, temperature rise, right, um, and uh, bear in mind, the gravitational will collapse so this is a point where a protostar is yeah so the temperature of the protostar is about 2000 to 3000 kelvin 
Okay. So um, we move to the wave sequence. Okay. Um, this is the dominant uh, stage, and uh, subsequently evolve a part to be a part of the stars. But in terms of um, the core temperature, it will increase up to 10 power of 7 uh, Kelvin. Right? So um, it's a million uh, temperature values. And the nuclear pro uh, process or nuclear refusion process will take and it will be increasing up to 10 power of 8 Kelvin, right? Um, which is produced the helium there in terms of the nuclear fusion. <coughs> so so it means that although we talk about um, the main sequence is the mid process or mid age, somehow the temperature is still considered very, very high. Okay. Right. Then uh, when we talk about the red giant, uh, what is so unique about red giant is we can see that the stars will expand up to 100 times diameter. Right. So imagine if yeah, if um the sun which is the sign out is in the main sequence um, region or main sequence uh, stage, we move to the red giants. So it means that the diameter will increasing up to 100 times compared to um, today, right? The size of today where we, we see. So, um, or the original stars one. So we can say that it is very, very um, large diameter. Okay, very, very huge. And uh, rich giant is sometimes also uh, known as a bloated star. Yeah. Um, so um, if we look to the main sequence, it's also it's also known as a, uh, a dwarf stars. Okay? It's not a white dwarf, but it's dwarf stars. Then uh, we can see that uh, you move to the white dwarf. Yeah. But somehow there's a process also the star we move to the super giant. Okay. And in the case of the um, white dwarf it will reduce in terms of the size yeah and uh, we can see how does the stars shrink yeah um, quite um, quickly and um, somehow there's this process of the transformation process uh, where uh, the mass will go out from the stars and uh, it will synthesize the elements in terms of in the supernova right so there will be also the next process we call as a huge explosions, uh, which means that this is the end of the life of the stars. Okay, but somehow it's not just the end of the stars; it will form the neutron stars, or it will form the another forms yeah, that we don't know after that. Okay, right. So um, uh, that is about the HR uh, diagram, and that is about um the evolution of the star in terms of the introductions okay um so we can you can also ask about this topic yeah um in the next uh, lecture before i move to the uh, relationship between the mass yeah the density and also the effective temperature okay so um let's look to the mass uh, radius mass luminosity relationships so I'm sure that you know that um, the um, in astronomy we know that luminosity is talk about the energy, right? Instead of power, instead of the brightness, instead of the magnitude. So there's a lot of parameters that represent the brightness of the stars, and one of it is actually the luminosity. But the unique about the luminosity is is actually uh, talk about the energy. Yeah, it's not just about the brightness but we talk about the energy also so this is amount of energy that radiates per unit time and uh, it can be in terms of two forms either apparent which is counting a visible light only or maybe in volumetric which means that is a total radiant energy right and basically we use a volumeter uh, to measure the uh, radiant energy over the wide band yeah and uh, it basically mostly is in absorption form and uh, it can in units of watch it can also in units of i um, stroke right it based on the temperature and also the size so our sun is has um, the value of 3.846 times 10 power of 26 watt 
Okay, so just imagine how bright our sun is and how bright are the star is, yeah, because we need to compact the, um, the density of the sun as a um, main unit, yeah. So, 10 power of 26 is very, very um, um, bright, yeah. Even our uh, light is about 60 watt or maybe 80 watts, yeah. So, our light in our house is about that value. So, we are talking about 10 power of 26. So, it means that if the sun is very near to us, we just see the white colors, uh, totally white. We cannot see anything, any objects, yeah, um, if the sun is very, very, uh, or very near to us, yeah. So, that is the um, um, imagination of the, um, or how to see the value of the um, luminosity of the sun. Okay, then um, luminosity also have the intrinsic constant, okay, and uh, bear in mind, we have learned what is the absolute magnitude is, yeah, we, we put the object at the 10 parsecs, then it's actually represent the absolute magnitudes. So, um, don't forget that we do have the interstellar extinctions, because this kind is because of the, the dust, um, the clouds, yeah in between of the stars and us, yeah? So, um, it do have the interstellar extinction. And uh, because of that also, we are basically use the apparent magnitude compared to absolute magnitude, okay? So, absolute um, apparent magnitude is something that we can see, yeah? So, the magnitude is based on the uh, visible um, magnitude. All right. So, um, if you look through the formula, right, we know that the relationship between luminosity and also area uh, with the brightness, yeah, B equals to L over A. And um, as the radius increases, of course, the surface area also will be increased. Okay. All right. So the B is actually equals to uh, L over 4 pi R squared, yeah, when we talk about the brightness. And uh, A, I'm sure you know that this is equals to area, and this is have the relationship between the uh, brightness and also the area with the luminosity. And L also, or uh, luminosity also can represent as a 4 pi r squared times with the uh, sigma t power of 4. So, Stephen Bosman, as, um, the constant is equals to 5.76, oh, sorry, 67 times 10 power of negative 8 watt per meter squared and Kelvin times power of negative 4. So this is the value of the Stephen Bosman constant which is related with the luminosity. Okay and now uh, once we want to see the relationship between the mass and also the um, luminosity we can also have the proportional between luminosity with the radius and also with the temperature. So for the mean sequence, luminosity is about um, L over L of the sun is equivalent to the M divided by M of the sun um, power of 3.9, which approximate to the 4. So just imagine the schematic diagram of HR diagram, uh, husband Russell diagram. We can know the ratio or the range of the mass based on of this formula. Right, based on the relationship between the luminosity and also the mass, right? Somehow you have seen that um, the value for the HR diagram are much more on the luminosity with the temperature. Now we can see that this is the uh, additional formula or additional parameters which the mass, and we can have the relationship between this kind of or both parameters, right? The luminosity and also the mass. Okay. So this is only for the main sequence, but it's not for the red giants, it's not for the super giants, yeah? Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, I'm finished for this one first, right? Before we move to the next topic, yeah? Um, in the next lecture, yeah? It's about um, the mass radius, mass velocity relationship, and it's also related with the 
magnitude right so um with that uh, thank you very much and assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh